think as adults, we lose imagination. And it took me a little while to really connect with my imagination again. To me, imagination and artwork is more important than skill. <laughs> I grew up creating art and it was always nurtured in our house because we always had the materials available and were encouraged to be doing those types of creative activities in our free time. And my art teachers were always great in giving me additional challenges. So I think that not only nurtured my love of art, but it also nurtured my love of education as well. When I was um, finishing up college, I had um, a type of a Chiari malformation that was kind of a, a bad case of it where my cerebellum was um, retreating down into my spinal column and causing all kinds of neurological issues. I would run into things and I couldn't even get out my thoughts in a way that made sense to me anymore and it was a very scary time for me. And finding out a surgery could be performed and I would get most of that part of myself back was such a relief for me. So a lot of my work references that time period leading up to it and sort of the after effects of that surgery as well. Everyone that has had a Chiari surgery is called a zipper head because it used to be when doctors would do the surgery, um, patients were left with a very long scar and zippers do show up a lot because you know, they're great because not only are they revealing something or opening up something, it's also a reference to that term. I've started to use keys quite frequently and keyholes to show answers and things fitting together perfectly. I have a lot of memory issues. I use balloons a lot as a, an example of how fleeting things are for me. I am now coming to the end of my first year teaching art at Larchmont Elementary School. One of my favorite things about teaching is when I discover that the way I'm saying something does not make sense, and when I can figure out the way that it does make sense, it means that I've connected with how their brain is working, and hopefully I have created a moment that they will then remember. It's truly amazing how they perceive things and how active their imaginations are. It looks great. I love how you're really varying your text and you're coming up with all kinds of really creative solutions to create emphasis. Nice job. I love long distance running. I will go out and run like 20 miles. I've done a number of marathons. And what I love about running is that I get to explore. So I started running really early and I loved that people will have their lights on in the morning and you can see inside their houses as you run by, which sounds very creepy, but it's also kind of magical because I love to wonder about what other people's lives are like. And I love to make up stories. I'm a very narrative thinker. And I think I never quite lost that from childhood, but I'll just glance and I think, oh wow, I never would have thought that the people that live in that house would have chosen blue for their living room. I thought that they were orange people, you know what I mean? So I um, created a map of Norfolk and I meticulously traced all of my running routes on it. And so these are the typical routes that I like to run in my little landmark places. I have made little notes about when I tend to run by those places and who I think lives there and just, you know, I've created this whole fiction in my mind because I spend, I'll spend sometimes four hours running. Your mind wonders and I think that's what's so great about it. Five years after you graduate from school, only two of those five students will still be making their own artwork just because life gets in the way and I've always made being creative a priority in my life because I've noticed that it helps keep my mind active and it nourishes me above and beyond, you know, just nine to five job. I need more than that and so that's what art has done for me.